Uh, Senator Manchin, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for your service. Thank you for being here. Uh, General Van Herc, uh, we spoke about uh, ensuring uh, Northern Command's training operations are efficient as possible. An important part of that process will include smaller scale training exercises, which allow for centralized planning, decentralized execution. We talked about this yesterday. So if you could share with us, uh, while I know that we are in agreement on the issue, could you share your opinions on how best to maximize the efficiency of training operations in these unique uh, and challenging times? Thank you, Senator. Uh, enjoyed the discussion. Yes, training opportunities are, are crucial, not only the tier one large exercises, but exercises at, at all levels. Sure. Uh, today, we have to be as efficient and as effective as possible with each and every dollar, training dollar that are given. And so we should look continuously at training opportunities that maximize the dollars that, uh, that Congress gives us, that taxpayers expect. Uh, I, I look forward to, uh, if confirmed, working with you to take a look at uh, potential opportunities for uh, efficiency and effectiveness in training. The National Guard is not the National Guard of our fathers, is it? I'm sorry, sir. The I National know. Guard is not the National Guard that our fathers or grandfathers knew. Absolutely. I concur with you 100%. Today's National Guard is in uh, with us each and every day, and there has to be training opportunities for the National Guard. Thank you, sir. And General Dickinson, in the past few months, we've seen concerning signs of offensive capabilities and tensions in space from our adversaries. This includes Russia's testing anti-satellite weapons last week, Iran launching a military satellite into orbit in April, and China launching three imaging satellites over the course of three days last month. While these three examples vary in severity, there is no question that they are signs of our adversaries' successful improving and investing in their space programs. So, what are your strategies for ensuring that the Space Command responds to adversaries challenging U.S. dominance in space while also avoiding perpetuating any further weaponizing of, uh, weaponization of space? Senator, I think uh, two parts to that that I would answer. First is that we have to uh, hold our, our competitors accountable for their actions in space. And uh, that has actually been one of the, the major uh, functions or achievements, if, in my words, in my opinion, uh, the first year, like 11 months of U.S. space comm being in ex existence is we have the professionals now that are looking at that each and every day using our space domain, domain awareness capabilities to understand what our competitors are doing in space. Do you have, do you have good, I'm sorry, sir, do you, good communications between our adversaries who are basically really going into space and, and going at it with a gusto that you have good communications to let them know what's the protocol or what we will accept, what we won't accept, or are we the gatekeeper? So, uh, Senator, we're, that, that is actually an area that we're uh, working on very hard right now is establishing what we would call norms of behavior in the space domain. And so we have seen this in other domains, for example, the, the maritime domain, where it took sure. us some time to establish what the norms of behavior are, what are the acceptable practices in that domain. So we're working that, and by holding our competitors accountable, we are starting to begin to establish what we would consider the norms of behavior are in space. Us to establish any type of authority has to be through some superiority, don't you think? Our, super Sorry, Senator. our superiority in space is the only way we're going to get any of their attentions probably to work with us or to allow us to set those uh, norms. Uh, Senator, I think uh, from our deterrence position, you know, we, we deter by a position of strength. And as I said in my opening uh, statement, yeah. we are the best in space. Thank you, sir. General Van, Van Kirk, one final one. I had the pleasure of speaking with you yesterday, and we touched upon the importance. Uh, oh, no, that's the wrong one. In the past few months, we've seen concerning signs of offensive capabilities and intentions. Uh, uh, i got to get, uh, get this right. Oh, here it is. We're seeing steadily increasing aggression from Russia and a growing interest from China in the region of the Arctic. I think we spoke briefly about that yesterday. Uh, could you give an outline of some of your top priorities to counter the conventional and unconventional threats that we're likely to face from both countries in that region? Sure, Senator. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the changes in the environment have allowed uh, more access to the Arctic. Uh, with the vast amount of, of resources, certainly there will be competition for those resources, sure. whether they be uh, uh, oil or minerals. Uh, both Russia and China are uh, very interested in the Arctic. With regards to what 
uh, the NORTHCOM perspective would be if confirmed is persistence. We need persistence and domain awareness in the Arctic to ensure that we're aware and, and able to detect, monitor, and if needed, uh, deter. Uh, Can you ahead. speak about the partnership that we see going on between China and Russia, partnerships in the Arctic, and are our allies as concerned as we are uh, about deterring that? Senator, I'm not aware of specific partnership with China and Russia in the Arctic. Uh, I, I assure you that our allies and partners are concerned about China's activities and Russia's activities in the Arctic. I look forward to talking to you more about that. And we just did a trip in the Arctic and we was very interesting in, in hearing from the Arctic nations uh, up there, their concerns and what activities they're seeing now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.